April the 16th is the 52nd day of Russia's large-scale war against Ukraine. In Kharkiv, the Russian military are shelling residential areas more and more intensely. On April the 16th, enemy missile hit several residential areas of the city. In one of them, there was a market with many people. The Russians knew it, so there is no doubt that it was true genocide. Three people were killed and at least 32 were injured. As a result of the shelling, a large-scale fire broke out in a five-story building and nine cars were also on fire. Rescuers were able to put out the fire and evacuate 65 people. On April the 16th, the occupiers fired at Lysychansk again. The refinery is on fire. It is not the first shelling of this object. According to the head of the regional military administration, Serhii Haidai, Russists target it systematically to exhaust the rescuers. There is no fuel there. A hospital was also damaged in the shelling in Lysychansk. At the same time, the Russians continue to cover the residential areas of the city with shelling. More than 10 infrastructure facilities were damaged during the day. Serhii Haidai also says that the invaders specifically targeted bread vans to leave people without food. In addition, on April the 16th, the evacuation from the city failed because of the shelling. Only one person was able to leave Lysychansk. In total, more than 70,000 Lysychansk region residents have not left to safer cities yet. We will not finish the evacuation until there is such a possibility, until there are people who are the enemy fired at central Ukraine. On the night of April the 16th, the Russians launched a missile strike at Alexandria, Kirovograd region. Until now, from the very beginning of the war, it has been quiet in the city. 15 April, for two days in a row, the occupiers have been striking Mykolaiv. Only civilian targets were attacked again. At least 39 people were injured. The oncology hospital was damaged. The invaders also hit a kindergarten. The children were not injured. But for today, in the city's hospitals, there are more than 300 people who suffered from the Russian attacks. On the night of April the 16th, the Russians also fired at Poltava region. One of the missiles hit the farm of one of the villages. There are no military facilities nearby. An enemy shell killed the guard who was there. There are at least 824 new graves in the Kherson city cemetery. All of them appeared between February the 28th and April 15th, according to the London-based human rights organization Center for Information Resilience, with reference to the satellite images of Planet Lab. Graves continue to be dug. At the same time, the occupiers in Kherson are distributing leaflets among the population. There, the invaders call the war an operation to eliminate the anti-people Kyiv regime and cynically add Russia is not at war with Ukrainian people. Meanwhile, according to the Verkhovna Rada Commissioner for Human Rights, Ludmila Denisova, in early May, the occupiers are planning to hold a pseudo-referendum in Kherson region to create a so-called People's Republic of Kherson, Kherson People's Republic like in Luhansk and Donetsk. To do this, from May the 1st to May the 10th, the Russists intend to close the entry and exit to Kherson and turn off all communications, said Denisova. The occupiers left the Kyiv region, but they also left many terrible surprises behind. Explosives in cars, streamers in the houses, undefined explosives and mines on the roads. Experts continue to neutralize dangerous findings. In the video, a pyrotechnician is neutralizing a deadly anti-personnel mine disguised as an ordinary shopping bag. The range of such mine is 90 meters. Dozens of hidden mines and undiffused explosives are also found in Sumer region. The regional authorities are advising the residents who have left not to return yet. Specialists must carefully secure the area. 
Russian troops plan to filter out all the men who remain in Mariupol. To do this from April the 18th, they not only want to close the entry and exit to the city, but also to prohibit civilians from moving around the districts. They want to mobilize some of the men, said Mariupol mayor's advisor Petro Andrushenko. According to him, they want to take Mariupol residents to Novoazovsk, from where some will be sent to the Russian occupation force and the other part to clear the debris. Andrushenko also noted that the occupiers are already detained men in Mariupol. In general, we can say that 5 to 10 percent fail the filtration and then get exported to Dukochaevsk and Donetsk. Their future is unknown. Where can you find a safe place if your city is under siege? Is it an unusual residential building? No. In hospitals or schools? No. In a theater, the heart of your city. Far away from any military objects. Yes, that's a good idea. Is there any other way we could warn Russian pilots about kids hiding in the theater? Yes, capital letters, in Russian. That way we will definitely be safe. But only if murdering our children isn't their goal. <laughs>